Our nation's mobility depends on millions of miles of asphalt pavement. Hot mix asphalt is the material of choice for new roads and the essential material for rehabilitation of all deficient pavements. Pavement rehabilitation can involve salvaging worn out pavements, strengthening an existing pavement, and or modernizing a pavement system to handle increased demand. Asphalt pavements can be rehabilitated by several cost-effective and efficient methods, including leveling or structural overlays, as well as recycling of the asphalt layers. However, the rehabilitation of the nearly 200,000 miles of existing concrete pavement is another matter. Spalling, cracking, faulting, and joint disintegration in concrete pavement affect the riding comfort and safety of our nation's roads and increase vehicle maintenance and operating costs. Deficient concrete pavement is difficult to maintain and rehabilitate. And joint repair and slab replacement of concrete pavement often causes lengthy traffic delays. An asphalt overlay is the most common method of repair for concrete pavement. However, the overlay can eventually experience extensive reflective cracking. Reflective cracks in asphalt overlays mirror or reflect the crack and joint pattern of the underlying concrete slabs. These cracks result from a number of factors, including traffic loadings, thermal stresses, and moisture problems. These conditions cause the slabs to move, eventually causing reflective cracks in the asphalt overlay. Preventing or reducing reflective cracks can prolong the life of the overlay and reduce maintenance costs. Four rehabilitation techniques are successfully being used to prevent reflective cracking in asphalt overlays. Cracking in seating, breaking in seating, rubbleizing, and saw cut and sealing. Selection of the appropriate rehabilitation technique for a deficient concrete pavement should be based on a detailed evaluation of the pavement's current condition and in some cases, an economic or life cycle cost analysis of the pavement. The National Asphalt Pavement Association, in conjunction with 19 state asphalt pavement associations, contracted with PCS Law Engineering to research and produce guidelines and methodologies for the rehabilitation of rigid highway pavements using asphalt concrete overlays. The PCS Law Report reviewed a total of 487 concrete pavement projects located in 34 states to develop design methodologies and construction criteria to assure acceptable long-term performance for the rehabilitation of concrete pavements using asphalt overlays. The PCS Law Report substantiates that any rehabilitation technique, like all pavement design, requires consideration of proper drainage to ensure good pavement performance. Attention to inherent drainage problems is essential for pavement rehabilitation to be fully effective. Let's take a closer look at these concrete rehabilitation techniques. Cracking and seating and breaking and seating. These techniques have essentially the same construction procedure, but the terms vary depending on the type of concrete pavement being rehabilitated. Cracking and seating is used on plain jointed concrete pavements. A pattern of tight cracks is created in the concrete, but the aggregate interlock is not destroyed. Breaking and seating is used on jointed reinforced or continuously reinforced concrete pavement. It cracks the slab completely and breaks the concrete to steel bond. Since pavement preparation is the same for both methods, the term slab fracturing will be used. However, it is important to remember which technique applies to which pavement type. Slab fracturing creates concrete pieces small enough to significantly reduce the stresses that contribute to reflective cracking. But the pieces are still large enough to retain some of the original concrete strength and maintain aggregate interlock between the pieces. Seating of the fractured slab reestablishes uniform sub-base support, reducing vertical movement in the slab pieces. Concrete pavements considered for slab fracturing are normally in fair to poor and poor to fail condition. Pavements in good to fair condition may be considered given adequate economic justification. Consideration must also be given to the design of the hot mix asphalt overlay. Overlay design considerations include differential deflection at the joint, slab length, amount of faulting, 
existing slab condition, environment, drainage, and predicted traffic. Most states have accepted four inches as the minimum overlay thickness and have investigated a number of procedures to determine the final thickness of the overlay. Let's take a closer look at the actual slab fracturing process. First, any existing asphalt overlay is removed. Again, any existing drainage problems must be corrected. Then the slabs are fractured. Proper cracking of the concrete requires that the entire depth of the slab be fractured. The selection of equipment used is based on its ability to fracture the full depth of the slab without excessive spalling of the surface. The resulting crack pattern should be clearly visible without the use of a water spray. These patterns range from 1 by 2 to 4 by 6 feet, with 1 and 1 half by 3 feet being the most generally accepted. After fracturing, the reduced slabs are seated using heavy pneumatic tired rollers, preferably a 50 ton roller. This places the pieces in firm contact with the underlying base, providing a stable layer for the asphalt overlay. Extreme care must be taken not to overroll the fractured pavement. This may actually loosen the seated pieces and reduce the layer's strength and stability. Next, any soft spots, punch-outs, or severely spalled areas discovered during the seating process are removed, cleaned, and patched with hot mix asphalt prior to placing the overlay. Once this is completed, the surface is thoroughly cleaned and swept, and an asphalt tack coat is applied. Finally, the hot mix asphalt overlay is placed and compacted. In the 1960s and 70s, New York and Wisconsin began to treat deteriorated concrete with slab fracturing. Recent surveys indicate that over 30 states have tried this process in various forms, with more than half a dozen now using it as a routine approach prior to overlaying concrete pavement. The state of Kentucky has successfully rehabilitated over 1,100 lane miles of reinforced concrete pavement using brake and seat techniques in conjunction with hot mix asphalt overlays. The best performance on plain jointed concrete pavements can be attained by achieving crack spacings between 12 and 30 inches, depending on the type of underlying base material. The PCS law report predicts performance lives of 18 years and about 20 years for cracking and seating of plain jointed concrete pavements before reaching pavement serviceability indexes of 2.5 and 2.0 respectively. These same performance life predictions are 12.5 years and 13.6 years respectively for breaking and seating of reinforced concrete pavements. The PCS law report suggests that the best performance can be attained by monitoring construction with non-destructive testing to minimize variability and verify that the concrete pavement's modulus of elasticity has been lowered below the threshold value of 1 million PSI. Rubbleizing is the complete disintegration of the concrete slabs. It destroys the slab action and unbonds any reinforcing steel in the slab, producing a high-quality crushed aggregate base. In effect, there is no longer a slab, so slab movement and reflective cracking are minimized. Rubbleizing is equally effective in all types of concrete pavement. Ideal candidates are those in fair to poor and poor to fail condition. These pavements may exhibit extensive slab movement, massive joint failure, and extensive slab cracking. Pavements in good to fair condition may be considered for rubbleizing, given adequate economic justification. There are two options suggested for designing an asphalt overlay for rubbleized pavement. The first is the assignment of a layer coefficient to the rubbleized concrete. A value suggested by the PCS law report is 0.28. The second option uses deflection analysis to determine the strength of the rubbleized pavement. Most states have accepted five inches as the minimum overlay thickness of a rubbleized pavement. The rubbleizing process starts with removal of any existing asphalt overlay. Any drainage problems must be solved to ensure proper performance of the rehabilitated pavement. The concrete pavement is then rubbleized. A resonant pavement breaker is one type of equipment that can be used to pulverize the concrete slabs without damaging the existing sub-base. 
The force created by the resident pavement breaker is transmitted to the pavement through a foot that moves in front of the machine. This energy dissipates into the pavement, rubbleizing the concrete into one to two inch size pieces at the surface with slightly larger pieces deeper in the slab. During the rubbleizing process, any existing steel reinforcement is left in place. If the steel does work its way to the surface, it is removed along with any existing joint sealing material. Next, the rubbleized pavement is compacted with two or more passes of a pneumatic tired or vibratory steel roller weighing at least 10 tons. This step locks the broken pieces together. Next, an asphalt tack coat may be placed followed by the hot mix asphalt overlay. Traffic should not be permitted on a rubbleized pavement until after the initial asphalt leveling course is placed. The PCS law report cites rubbleizing as an excellent method of rehabilitation for any type of concrete pavement, especially pavements containing reinforcing or temperature steel. Sixteen states have used this rather new technique. While performance data is limited, the PCS law report evaluated 19 projects and showed a present serviceability index of greater than 4.0 for rubbleized pavements ranging from 8 to 10 years of age. The final rehabilitation technique is saw cut and sealing. With this technique, saw cuts are made in the asphalt overlay directly above existing transverse joints in the concrete pavement. Sometimes, longitudinal joints are also saw cut and sealed, depending on their condition and the extent of the concrete's lateral slab movement. With saw cut and sealing, you predetermine the location of the reflective cracks in the overlay by installing more easily maintained joints directly above the existing concrete joints. This process minimizes the detrimental effects of uncontrolled reflective cracking. To be a good candidate for this method, the existing concrete pavement must be structurally sound and have at least 40% of its structural life remaining. Saw cut and sealing is best suited for plain jointed and jointed reinforced concrete pavements that are being overlaid to improve rideability, increase structural capacity, correct slipperiness, prevent spalling, and or reduce noise. If the pavement has joints that have completely failed, if there is excessive differential deflection at the joints, or if there is random cracking within the slabs, another rehabilitation approach should be taken. A major benefit of saw cut and sealing is that the asphalt overlay thickness may be substantially reduced. Thick overlays are often used to prevent the movements that cause reflective cracking. By using the saw cut and seal process, the reflective cracking is not prevented, just controlled. The first step in the saw cut and seal process is to prepare the existing concrete pavement by removing and replacing cracked slabs, restoring joints and load transfer and under sealing where necessary. Next, the concrete joints are located accurately. This is done using a fixed reference system such as stake hubs, iron pins or curb markings. The reference system must be set up before placing the asphalt overlay. Misalignment of the saw cut by as little as three quarters of an inch can result in a reflective crack appearing next to the misaligned saw cut. After the overlay is placed and compacted, the location of the underlying concrete joints are marked on the overlay using a painted or chalk line. Next, the asphalt overlay is saw cut. The slot dimensions of the saw cut are generally a half inch wide and five eighths of an inch deep. Some agencies have adopted requirements for larger slot dimensions for slabs greater than 30 feet in length. Overlays greater than 4 inches will also require a 1 8 inch wide cut below the main slot, extending about one third into the overlay depth. All saw cuts should extend the full width of the lane plus about 3 feet into the shoulder. The overlay must be cool before the sawing operation begins. The overlay should be saw cut within one day of placement. Saw cutting may be performed wet or dry. Residue from the sawing operation is clean from the pavement before sealing the joints. If a bond breaker tape is used, it is installed immediately after the cleaning operation. The joint sealant is typically a hot applied rubber asphalt. 
The sealant should meet ASTM specification D3405. The sealant should fill the saw cut 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch below the pavement surface. Do not overfill the saw cut. Any excess sealant should be removed with a heated scraper or other device to prevent snow plows or other equipment from tearing the sealant from the joint. The final appearance should be a neat, continuous seal across the entire lane. The New England states currently lead in the use of the saw cut and sealing technique. New York requires saw cut and sealing as the minimum treatment for preventing reflective cracking problems. After five years of use, the state reports virtually no joint failures in these sections. A report on Ohio's experiences indicates no degradation of ride quality on 26 projects ranging in age up to six years. The PCS law report predicts performance lives of 10.7 and 15.5 years for saw cut and seal pavements before reaching pavement serviceability indexes of 2.5 and 2.0 respectively. These four methods for rehabilitation of Portland cement concrete pavements offer alternatives to the maintenance problems associated with reflective cracking in asphalt overlays on untreated concrete pavement. These techniques are workable, cost-effective rehabilitation approaches that should be considered when evaluating deteriorated concrete. Reflective cracking can be reduced or eliminated, improving pavement service life and saving significantly on future maintenance costs.